Hi everybody, it is Ivana and I want to welcome you to Vasiva. This is episode 2 and today's topic is going to be a very heavy topic to some people, especially to me. Today's topic is going to be about grief and dealing with the loss of a loved one. So, I have my notes over here. I have a box of tissues because I don't know if I will cry or not. <laughs> I'm usually pretty good at uh, speaking about this story and describing what happened and etc. But you never know. M emotions come and go like waves. So, we'll see. And I also have, um, you know, a can of nest tea because you know, just to make it go by a little bit nicer. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, my dad passed away about, it's been full two years, so, uh, two years and, so, two years and three months. So, he passed away January 2018, January 1st, 2018. So, how this actually I have notes right here because my mind will probably be jumbled and all over the place so I want to first start off with how I found out that he passed away so it was actually New Year's Eve me and my friends were at a hotel and we were celebrating New Year's Eve together we were drinking having fun playing games we were, at, we were actually watching a movie and that movie was Descendants 2 <laughs> if anyone cares to know but yeah it was a very chill fun night we were just relaxing having fun the four of us all together in a two-bedroom queen bed hotel room and we go to bed everything's fine and I wake up I couldn't go to bed till four o'clock which was very weird because I think we only stayed up till 2 a.m. that night and I had the hardest time falling asleep. I tried to listen to rain sounds, wouldn't work. I tried to uh, listen to ASMR because I that helps me fall asleep sometimes, nothing. I tried to even like count sheep and stuff like that. Still didn't work. Finally, I think by maybe like 4.30, something like that. I don't know when exactly I fell asleep, but I did fall asleep. And I get a call at around 8 a.m. from my brother who's back home, who lives back home in Serbia, where my dad also lived. And I see about four missed calls or so, and I am first taken aback because my brother would never call me four times to just wish me Happy New Year's. So because my friends were asleep, I texted him and I went, I'll call you in about 15 minutes. My friends are asleep next to me. And immediately after that text, I get another, another call back. And I'm like, okay, this is something serious then. So I go to the hotel washroom and close the door and everything. And I call him and I go, hey, like, what's up? And he's fully in like tears, like sobbing. Side note, I've never heard my brother cry ever in my entire life and he goes Tata passed away Tata died one of those two words he said I think he said Tata died and Tata means dad in Serbian and I was so taken aback and in shock I just went how and he goes we I think from a heart attack we don't know I found him this morning we're waiting for the like paramedics to come and get him and I'm like okay keep in mind it's 8 a.m. over here meanwhile there it's 2 p.m. and apparently he passed away around like 7 a.m. and the paramedics were still not here which back home is normal but to here sounds absolute crazy and disorganized which is perfectly how you describe back home and their healthcare system so he tells me to immediately call my brother and tell him what happened and I go okay so I end the call I enter back into the hotel room my friends are just starting to wake out wake up out of their slumber because 
they've heard me speak on the phone and you know the bathroom's right beside the bed so it's not like they can't hear me and I go and Emily my friend Emily says good morning great to me a good morning and me in shock I just stand up up against the wall and I just go my dad died and I didn't cry or nothing I was just in complete shock because I didn't believe it and my friends bless their hearts they immediately get up and comfort me um, ask me you know if I'm okay and stuff like that because they don't see any tears they're like what's going on in her mind <laughs> and then I get a call from my other brother that lives here with us the old eldest one and he tells me to you know to come home you guys are going to come to our place for a bit spend it as a family you know your uncle and aunt and cousin are going to come too so we can all be together which is a beautiful thing um it's sad how a death can, has to bring a family together but it is also a beautiful thing to experience and see and i immediately like he was like where are you i will come pick you up and i went it's okay emily will drive me back so emily ended up driving me back to my apartment and i step in my mom's like crying in tears my brother's on the phone talking to my other brother and also my uncle i think my mom comes up and hugs me and she's like in tears and i just I just couldn't cry I couldn't I couldn't get that emotion out I was just there I was just comforting my mom because I did not know what else to do and lo and behold we get to my brother's apartment or in his house and we all get together we're all talking about you know buying plane tickets and flying back home for the funeral because I think we had only two days to get there so I think he died on like the m Tuesday and I think the funeral was on a Thursday so we had to leave that night or the night uh, the day after I can't remember and it takes pretty much a whole day to travel there it takes like 14 hours 15 with layovers so that let alone you know drains you and let's just say the flight was not a pretty thing. I think we ended up going to London. Then at London, our plane got, no, I'm lying. Our plane got delayed two hours on the runway in Toronto because a gentleman didn't board, but his luggage was on the plane. And his luggage was, of course, the first luggage that went in because, you know, that's just how life works. So everyone was on the runway for two hours that was fun so that ended up delaying our london flight and then our london flight then, had, then they had to find a flight for us through frankfurt germany then that got delayed an extra hour and then from germany we got to finally i think belgrade i think i think it was hazy because it was such a long time and instead of getting there at 5 p.m. Serbian time, we got there at 12 a.m. Serbian time. Meanwhile, the funeral is literally at 8 a.m. the next morning, like that morning. And I couldn't fall asleep. Um, I remember walking into that house for the first time. And meanwhile, I have been there. I was there literally that summer of 2017 i was there like i was with my dad i was there in serbia in my house and here i am again in january when it's cold winter but my dad's not around and i walk into the house all of a sudden you feel like this negative weird aura around the house when you walk in and i immediately go up to well, we first get greeted by my godparents and then also my uncle and aunt from my mother's side came and greeted us, which was really nice. They waited for us till midnight and then they just hugged us and said, see you tomorrow, you know, my condolences, etc., etc. And we, after they left, we went upstairs to my dad's room and that was the first time I actually realized that this is all real, that it's not a dream, that it's not fake, that it's not 
something that I created in my head. It's actually real. He's not here with me. And I sat down on his bed and I cried so hard. I cried into his pillow because I just couldn't believe that and I'm crying already <laughs> because I just couldn't believe that the man that I loved and I considered to be a daddy's little girl even though we weren't as close as we were when I was little um, that he was just gone because I would actually sleep in his there with him in his bed sometimes when I was younger and stuff like that so it was just it was so surreal to just experience a loss of a soul that was once there like physically and lo and behold the next night the I we ended up going to bed at I think I went to bed at 3 a.m. because I stood up I stayed up late with my brothers and my uncle that came with us and we just like spent three hours just like talking about him and stuff like that and I went to my bed I somehow ended up falling asleep I think because all the jet lag and stuff I was dead tired but if I wasn't for that I doubt I would actually fall asleep and I had to wake up at 8 a.m. to get ready for the funeral and had to wear all black and got ready had to rush that felt like a whole other experience like getting ready for the funeral like my neighbor was there helping like you know you, I think you have, there's a tradition where you have to like bake bread and stuff like that I think I don't know it's foggy but my neighbor was there you know trying to hustle with because we had a I guess you can call it like a housemaid we considered her family but she was a housemaid and she was there also helping with stuff and you know bringing plates and everything like that and we went to the funeral that was a whole other experience Ex like seeing my dad i actually remember i didn't actually see his body because i didn't i couldn't that would be too tra too traumatizing for me i remember we got there and there's like this little hut that they have back home that's where they held this funeral and it was empty like there was nothing there and then they said they'll bring out the casket so i'm out like just outside of the hut just chilling and walking around then they suddenly bring the casket they call me over my brothers they call me over and seeing the casket that was chills down my literal spine I just immediately burst into tears because you just can't believe it you actually like you can't and there were flowers around it it looked beautiful but I just couldn't believe it me and my brothers just burst into tears I just saw them crying and it was a crazy experience and then we proceeded with the actual funeral which was really sad I actually well duh a funeral is always sad <laughs> um but that was very beautiful and saddening at the same time because my dad knew so many people that there were too many people for the that came to the funeral that they all couldn't fit in the hut there were people waiting outside of the hut because that's how many people my dad knew and lives he impacted um and i remember everyone comes up to you and says you know my condolences kisses you twice on the cheek and that was a whole tedious process because i mean there was a lot of people which was a great thing <laughs> but i mean i couldn't take it after a while i felt lightheaded so i had to go sit down and then it came the time where you have to step up to the casket and um I don't know what this is called in English, but you do that. <laughs> I don't know what it's called, like the sign of the Holy, the Holy Spirit, I think. Um, is that what it's called in English? I don't know. But I did that and you go up and you kiss the cross. And 
tears just flowing, flowing out of my eyes, just bawling, sobbing, crying, like saying final goodbye because literally 10, like five, not even five minutes after that, we were putting him in the ground. And my godfather gave a beautiful speech and he wrote it down and he was crying so that was beautiful also the priest gave a really beautiful speech i wish someone recorded it because that priest was like knew my dad for a good amount of time like at least a couple years and because he'd always come for like either easter or christmas and stuff like that anyway he would just come to our house and do the regular stuff that priests do i sound so uneducated about it but i really don't know what how it is in english how to say it in english and so after the funeral was done we went um we didn't actually go home you have like a big feast and a dinner with everyone and that was weird because i sat at the head table which makes sense because, you know, you're the offspring of that parent, so you sit at the head table. But it was felt so weird, like I felt like it was a celebration, which meanwhile it was a celebration of the life that he had because he did like live life the way he wanted it to. And, but it felt wrong sitting at the head of the table and just being there and like celebrating it after like I felt like I should have just gone home and mourned the loss but I do appreciate that dinner as well because it is a tradition and that's what my dad would have loved so he would have loved to see everyone together and talking and getting along so I'm so happy we did that now the aftermath of the funeral I couldn't really spend time in the house i f couldn't even sleep in my room even though my room was only across the hallway from my dad i couldn't fall asleep i actually had to sleep in my neighbor's house and with her because i just couldn't i was too petrified of i don't know i was too petrified of facing the reality still i didn't like the aura in the house and honestly i was kind of scared that uh, he would come and you know spiritually do something <laughs> i know that sounds so stupid or like i like weird but i i thought that you know his spirit would come and like knock something over or like make a sound or i'd like dream about him and he'd come and like say something and that's what was going through my head but i just couldn't fall asleep i just knew i could not be in that house when i was sleeping and honestly, I didn't spend that much time in the house either way because I would go seek out a distraction. And that distraction was uh, my best friend. I have a really great friend back home. She lives four houses down from me in the same neighborhood. And I've known her since I was like eight or nine or something like that. And she was actually at the funeral, which was really nice to see because I don't expect people to come, like my friends and stuff to the funeral. You don't really hear about it or see it happen, but that honestly meant so much to me that she showed up. And I remember seeing her um, before we put my dad in the ground and buried him. I saw her and we just locked eyes and we just like immediately hugged and start started crying because I don't know, I felt so relieved to have her there, and she was a really great support system through it all. So I did see her as, and she was a great help in distracting me, because I would go to her house and we would like talk about different things, or we would just like go on her computer and play games, or um, even like play card games we used to play that all the time so we did that a lot overall the way i experienced the aftermath of the funeral was through a lot of distractions and that also blends into coming back home in canada because i started first year of university so meanwhile while i was dealing with the stresses of university i also had to deal with the loss of my dad and 
second semester started and I had to email all my professors and say I won't be coming first week of classes I had a loss in the fam in the family and of course they were all understanding etc cetera, etc cetera. so but and I lived in a dorm at the time and how I dealt with his loss was a lot of pushing down my emotions because that's how I work in general but when it comes to something so so impactful and so tragic as losing a parent I just kept pushing it down even more and there would be nights where I would just like explode and like put on a song I actually have two songs that I put on when I feel like crying about him that's how I cope with things it's actually uh, both by Luke Grahams I think his name is his last name he's the singer that sings seven years old like once I was seven years old that guy but it's not that song. He has a beautiful song called Funeral and oh my god, what is the other one? I have to find it now. It's gonna bother me if I don't ignore my phone. Let me pull it up one second. Lucas Graham. Let's see, let's see. You're not there. That's the song. And both those songs. I forgot when it came out, but both those songs just related so much to my event, like what was happening in my life. And Lucas's um, dad also passed away. So the perspective he gave was exactly what I was going through at that time. And even now I relate to those songs because the You're Not There song has lyrics basically saying, you know, you won't be there to see the birth of my son or my wedding and stuff like that. And that's something I have really relate to because my dad won't be there for those bigger milestones, unfortunately, in my life. And he won't be there for my wedding to like walk me down the aisle or he won't be there to um, do like a father daughter dance. <laughs> and unfortunately he won't be able to see me graduate and the saddest thing about that is that I suggested to my brother and my dad for them to come to my high school graduation which was the summer of 2017 and both of them kind of brushed it off and they were like it's okay like we have time to get to your we'll come for your you know, like university graduation. Because that's going to be bigger. And I wish that they took my advice and suggestion to heart and actually came. Because I wish my dad got at least to see me graduate high school and see me in a cap and gown. Because that would mean so much to me it is what it is and I'm just sad that he won't be there to you know approve of my husband <laughs> or even you know see the first birth of um, my child and that's what hurts the most but <laughs> see now I'm crying <laughs> I need a second to recoup these tissues were a great idea to bring <laughs> how I dealt with this loss and as you can see it still heavily impacts me and I dealt with a lot of I dealt with it through distractions and also as I mentioned the songs and I would take childhood photos and I would cry and just look and I would talk, actually talk to the photos and say things like I just said right now like oh Tata I'm so sad you won't be there to see me graduate or get married and stuff like that and I would actually talk to the photos as if he was listening and that's what helped me get through it and surprisingly I did not have as many crying sessions as I thought I would I think I only had less than 10 throughout the whole two years that it's been now, the past two years. Um, but honestly, I think this one counts as like 11 or something. <laughs> but 
what my advice is I know people constantly say like oh I heard people say like for grief that it gets like easier and honestly it doesn't get easier the only thing the pain doesn't get easier what gets easier is the distraction of everyday life preventing you from thinking about that person every time and I know that when I go through those milestones like a graduation or a wedding or anything of that sense that him not being there will be my number one thing in my head I know that even though those experiences and those milestones will be positive for the most part because I'll be happy that I'll be getting married and I'll be ecstatic that I'm graduating that it will always carry a sad emotion as well because that one person that I wish was there there oh fuck <laughs> that I wish was there to see me succeed won't be there he won't be there to see me do it on my own <sighs> that's what hurts the most and I didn't really have that much close of a relationship to my father in the past few years of my life as I did when I was younger because when I was younger and you asked me like who's my favorite parent I would always say dad always like Tata was my number one like I was his little girl I like loved him with my whole heart and I still do love him but unfortunately some trauma and issues that arised when I was living back home and the divorce of my parents really um, impacted our relationship in such a negative way that it severed our relationship a little bit. The one thing that I do regret the most is not making an effort to connect with him because after our relationship severed a little bit i was so bitter even subconsciously at him that i would not text him as much and i would not call as much and what's the saddest part of this whole thing and i'm gonna try to say it without crying is that i don't have one single photo with my dad since i was a little kid i think the oldest photo i have with him is probably when i was 12 or yeah i think 12 13 and that was at a family's wedding and it's me and him doing a father-daughter dance <laughs> which i guess you can say is nice because we did have it not at my own but i mean at someone else's so at least i did get that with him um that's the saddest thing of it all is that I don't have a photo with him at all and I never decided to take like a selfie or um, even just pull out my camera and just take like a casual photo of him I never did and that is one of the regrets that I will live with I think the rest of my life because I let my petty and bitter heart prevent me from having a nice memory or a photo with my dad. That's also what I want to give advice to anyone listening or watching is that please like spend time with people you love. Like life is so goddamn fucking short. And especially now in this time of the pandemic you never know like god forbid you lose someone but you never know when you will or if you will so just please like enjoy the time that you have with your loved ones and people that you enjoy spending time with because they can be gone in a goddamn fucking second and that's what happened to me with my dad because who could have known a heart attack would hit this man at 57 years old out of the blue so strong that it didn't even give him a warning it just killed him off right off the bat and that's what I would say is my advice I would also say 
important advice, take photos if you can. Take as many as you want. I know people find that. I know people might find, t you know, taking your phone out and just snapping a video or photo seems redundant or stupid in the moment, but it will, that photo leaves a memory with you and I would take anything just to have one photo with my dad when I was 17 or 18. Because those photos create memories and I only do have photos of him when I was younger and I'm also very thankful that I have those because I actually wouldn't have nothing <laughs> to cry over about <laughs> and talk to when I'm, you know, mourning <laughs> his death. But that is my advice. Whew, a heavy topic for me and talking about it and stuff like that. But thank you for tuning in for this episode of Aceva. I hope you guys, I hope you guys actually don't relate to what I'm talking to, but if you do, I hope that it helps you and helps you come to terms with stuff and accept it the way it is because that's all you can do and I hope no one has to go through this pain. Again, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. Next episode is going to be a little bit more lighthearted than this, trust me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you get to see me cry or hear me cry and, you know, that was probably fun. <laughs> so, yeah, I can't wait to listen to, you know, listen to this and cringe over it when I'm editing it. So, <laughs> but no, thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode and I will see you in the next one. Bye.